This video is sponsored by I Put the Egg on the Sulaco. It was me, t shirt. Check it out at the viral store. Can a xenomorph be tamed? Well, that would be Wayland Yutani's wet dream. And they did get close several times, but the end result, always the same a bloodbath. We know that in Alien and Aliens, Wayland Yutani want to capture a xenomorph specimen at all costs and even the crew are expendable. Seriously, who'd want to work for this company? They sound worse than Amazon. In Alien 3, they fail yet again, when Ripley sacrifices herself by diving into molten lead, even though Bishop the Android, or human, tried to convince her otherwise. In Alien Resurrection, the company's long gone, bought out by Walmart, and it's the United Systems military who've managed to successfully breed xenomorphs. The xenomorphs are sprayed with liquid nitrogen each time they misbehave. It's part of their taming program. Wow, you've almost done it, guys. But they escape and kill everyone. Again. In the Aliens Nightmare Asylum comic, another idiot attempts to tame Xenos. The story continues where Aliens Outbreak left off. Sergeant Wilkes, Billy, and a damaged synthetic Bueller have escaped an alien-infested Earth on a cargo ship. The crew discovers the ship is ferrying aliens to an unknown destination. After killing the aliens, the ship autopilots to a military post commanded by General Spears, who's breeding and attempting to train aliens to fight against their own kind on Earth. He's depicted as ruthless and is called insane by several characters. Throughout the story, it's revealed that Spears is extremely paranoid about his own safety, the safety of his aliens, and is willing to sacrifice his own troops without hesitation. As the story progresses, the aliens inevitably escape and begin taking over the military base. Wilkes and Billy manage to hide on the same ship General Spears uses to escape. Once aboard the ship, Wilkes and Billy realize it's full of trained aliens that Spears intends on using to take back the infested Earth. The synthetic Bueller also manages to send a transmission saying goodbye to Billy as they were separated in the middle of the story. Since Bueller is a synthetic and torn in two, the aliens do not engage him in any way. Bueller is left alone and abandoned in the military base. Anyway, bottom line, it don't work out. But you can check out the comic. Okay, what other idiot tried to tame Xenos? Let me think. Oh, in Aliens, Music of the Spears, a very bizarre novel indeed. Eccentric composer Damon Eddington wants to make a symphony out of all the noises an alien would make over the course of its life. Yeah. This involves raising one from an egg. While the composer slowly descends into madness, his assistant is trying to build a rapport with the alien, whose name is Mozart. Yeah, seriously. She's the one who feeds it and speaks to it in a sweet manner and so on. One of the other staff members asks her, so you're trying to tame it? And she replies, oh no, the best you could hope for would be for it to hesitate for a moment before killing you. Later, when the inevitable breakout by the alien happens, the same staff member finds the assistant bleeding out on the ground. She calls him over and says, Mozart, he, he hesitated just for a moment. That's the closest anyone ever got to taming a Xeno. The common high-forming xenomorph is essentially untamable. Without a queen, individuals revert to instinctive behaviors and attempt to produce a queen and form a hive. Once a queen is present, she marshals her hive as she sees fit. And queens are too aggressive and intelligent to be tamed. Some fans claim that non-hiving xenomorphs can be tamed. No No For Real on Reddit claims the following. It's not entirely possible, though xenomorphs like bees, while known primarily by the hive species, exist in solitary and nest-forming species as well. These are in fact believed to have developed first. Yet, they're almost unheard of outside of academic xenobiology and xenosociology circles due to the rampant spread of hiving xenomorphs and the great threat the hives represent to humanity. It's believed that, with the right resources, it might even be possible to civilize them. Nests have been discovered that are very similar to human settlements, with clear and distinct structures and evidence of tool use, calendars, sculptures, and animal domestication of their own. They even include temples with signs of complicated cultural ceremonies. When properly socialized, these xenomorphs are no more aggressive than humans themselves, despite retaining the natural weapons and defenses that make the hiving xenomorph so feared. Unfortunately, solitary and nest-building xenomorphs have not shared the biological success story of their hive-building cousins. It appears that at some point in the past, there was a plague, still poorly understood, that affected them severely. Often the plague completely wiped out their populations, with the exception of larvae still protected within the leathery eggs. It's unknown how the hiving species survived, they may be inherently immune to the pathogen. 
It's also possible that they too were devastated, but they were better prepared to bounce back due to their more aggressive reproductive behavior and the extreme adaptable intelligence of their queens. Because of this, solitary and nest building xenomorphs are largely extinct in human occupied space. Among humanity and its close relatives, it was the more civilized Homo sapiens that thrived where the more animalistic species failed. The history of the xenomorph family demonstrates that this is sadly not always the case. Occasionally, we discover non hiving xenomorph eggs that are still viable. Unfortunately, without proper upbringing, the hatchlings are feral and largely indistinguishable from their hiving cousins. Their acid blood makes genetic analysis difficult, to say the least. Often the first clue is simply that the individual is capable of reproducing on its own and yet produces no queens. The danger a feral xenomorph of any variety represents tends to mean that the creatures are exterminated before any further study can be done. They're the final flickerings of a fascinating but long dead civilization, hardly noticeable against the great darkness of space. Now this sounds a lot like fan fiction to me, but the idea was so interesting that I included it in the debate here. He's basically stating that the non-hive building xenomorph species can be tamed, if they even exist. There's been a few instances in the comics where it seems like the xeno is tamed, but they're using some kind of cybernetic enhancement or mind control, like the image here. So what do you reckon? Can a xenomorph be tamed? Or don't bother, it's impossible, they're gonna kill you. Leave it alone. Please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Also, please follow me on Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, consider supporting me on Patreon. Oh, and make sure you click the bell icon to turn on notifications. I'll see you later.